So I often get asked, why the geologic survey? What's the importance? Who cares? For me, it comes down to a simple thing. It's trying to know where it's safe to live and what are the resources that are available to the state to keep the economy thriving. In other words, we have a very active geologic state here. We had an earthquake, you know, a year ago. Everybody felt it, but where's the next one? Where are the landslides, you know? Is it safe to build? Urbanization is taking over. Our goal is how do we get good information? We do that through research. We do it through collaboration with state agencies, with research groups such as universities, and with the private industry that comes to us looking for good information. The main underlying factor is that we are viewed as an unbiased source of good, solid scientific information. The chemistry of the lake allows for some interesting mineral extraction. We have magnesium metal production on the lake. We have potash production on the lake. Uh, just recently, lithium production started on the lake. And of course, salt is produced on the lake. In 2020, uh, U.S. Magnesium started producing lithium as a byproduct. And obviously, lithium is going to be really important sort of in a energy transition from fossil fuels to more renewable energy because of its use in batteries. So it's significant that we produce lithium here at Great Salt Lake. And in fact, Utah is only the second state in the U.S. to produce lithium. Geologists at the survey use this collection to study Utah's natural resources. Uh, we leverage this collection to write research grants. For example, we recently acquired a $10 million grant from the Department of Energy to look at the oil potential in the Northern Paradox Basin. This core was the result of that study where we drilled down 10,000 feet into the subsurface and acquired about 100 feet of core from an interval called the Cane Creek Shale, which is an emerging petroleum play. Energy in minerals impacts everything we do. Um, it includes the raw materials for everything in our lives, and it is important to responsibly develop these energy and minerals in the state of Utah to further Utah's economy, especially in rural communities where a lot of these commodities are located. I like to tell people I'm a biostratigrapher. I use fossils to date and tie rock units together regionally and in fact globally. Uh, as with the sequence of animals living through time, different animals are found at different time intervals. So if we get the same animal in two different places, we can assume they're fairly close to the same time. Nowadays we calibrate this stuff with radiometric dating and other methodologies as well. But in Utah, we have a lot of rock sequence that doesn't have good means of dating using other independent means. And in that, I started using things like dinosaurs. I have them as my index fossils. They're a little bigger than the micro fossils that many people use, but they work just as well. The Utah Geologic Survey provides us real opportunities to look at the fossil record in, in fairly unique ways. The Paleo Group is part of the Geologic Mapping Group. And Working with our mapping geologists, we've been able to really put the fossils into context at a level that we wouldn't have been able to do if we were in a normal university. The wetlands group has been monitoring the surface water levels in important wetlands out in the Great Basin and trying to quantify the relationship between fluctuations in those surface water levels and changes in the habitat within the pools and marginal to the pools, because that supports any number of things, wildlife, uh, conservation species, and even grazing. And so both the groundwater section and the wetland section are working together to define those fluctuations uh, mathematically and also try to evaluate how they might change as uh, groundwater pumping increases over time and uh, climate change occurs over time. Somebody needs to provide information to the state as to when and where those things are occurring. Is it safe to build? Is there going to be groundwater? Is there going to be good ore or minerals that we need to sustain the state? Those are the values that we bring to the state is knowing where they are, how we could access them, and what is the value to the people, and is it safe to live where you are? That's a value that saves lives.